Admiral Tim here. <laughs> and people are asking us all the time, how can you afford as broke people? How can you guys afford to cruise all the time? Well, the truth is we've learned to save a ton of money. And for the first time ever, myself and Felicia, we're going to share those secrets with you. So come along for the ride, learn some stuff. There's some controversial stuff in this too. If you disagree with anything or if you have your own ideas, put them in the comments below. Definitely would love to hear them. And we may feature you and your comments in an upcoming video. Thanks for watching. Hit that like and subscribe button. And let's save some money on the seven seas together before you get lit up. <laughs> We cruise several times a year, so we've learned many ways to save money on cruise vacations. If you're short on cruise ship status points or don't have enough casino credit to get the free room offers, no worries. There's ways to save money. And for the first time ever, Felicia and me are sharing our top 10 favorite money saving cruise tips. In theory, if we applied all these savings to our upcoming Icon of the Sea sailing in January 2024, we could have saved over $7,000 on that one single cruise. Here are the 10 secret ways to save money on cruise vacations. Number 10, book early. Early birds always get the best deals. Well, usually. We booked a cabin on the largest cruise ship on earth, Royal Caribbean's Icon of the Seas, about a year in advance. Turns out we scored big savings. For our seven day inaugural cruise, we paid 7,688 bucks for two of us. To book the same room with the same options two months out, it was up to 12,777. That's crazy. We saved $5,089 by booking early. And we got a better choice of rooms. In the old days, cruise prices could actually drop if demand was low and the cruise lines wouldn't tell you about the fare change. You had to watch it. Cruising is booming again and it's not unusual for cruises to sell out months in advance. So price changes usually don't happen. Number nine, book off season. Spring break and summertime are the most expensive times to book cruises because the kids are out of school and families have recognized cruising is a wonderful all-inclusive money-saving vacation. Since many of those lazy, snot-nosed boogie pickers will be relieving themselves in the public hot tubs, it's probably not the best time to cruise. Pricing is driven by supply and demand. Since the booger eaters are back in school, there are less families cruising in the fall. September through February seem to be the best times to cruise if you're looking to save some cash. Plus, it's cold in much of the country, so an adults-only trip to southern latitudes during that time of year is always a pleasant escape. Number eight, book an inside room. We booked a cruise on one of Royal Caribbean's oldest ships to try and remember what it was like during the old days in the early 2000s when we first started cruising. We went full Monty and booked an inside room for the first time in 20 some years. Crazy, right? Nonetheless, it made for some very interesting video. Since inside rooms take up less space, many older ships have a large inventory of inside rooms available. And remember, more supply and less demand usually leads to lower prices. There are actually some benefits to inside rooms that some seasoned cruisers prefer. Since there are no windows in inside rooms, they're much darker, people can sleep better. And since inside rooms aren't heated by thermal energy that enters the balcony room through loose seals or the door glass itself, inside rooms are usually a few degrees cooler. Check out our inside room on Royal Caribbean's oldest ship. Number seven, room guarantees. If you let the cruise line pick your room, you can save a little cash. They might put you in a room with a slightly obstructed view, like behind a lifeboat or something. You might be on the starboard side of the ship where you can't look over each of the ports you visit. Your room may be directly under a busy area like a nightclub or a restaurant where there's lots of noise above you at some parts of the day. Or you might be stuck on a lower floor towards the front or rear of the ship where you may be more susceptible to engine noise or ship motion. Or your room might be perfectly located if space allows. Honestly, your room's location is no big deal unless you spend your entire cruise in your room. But don't get quarantined. Even in an inside room at the worst location, you can always find a comfortable place with a view somewhere on one of the higher decks during the day or in the evening. You'll only need to sleep and bathe in a poorly located room. Savings aren't big. We're talking usually less than 100 bucks a room. Number six, dine only at the buffet or main dining room. Dining at the buffet or in the MDR main dining room is included with most major cruise lines and at no additional charge. 
In our experience on Royal Caribbean Carnival, Celebrity Princess, Virgin, Norwegian, Disney, and MSC Cruises, the MDR and Buffet usually offer a wide variety of pretty decent food. There are specialty restaurants on most cruise ships, including ritzy steakhouses, Japanese hibachi and sushi restaurants, seafood restaurants, Italian restaurants, sports bars, and other eateries that will charge you a little extra. But they're optional. You can purchase a specialty restaurant package in advance to save some money on most cruise lines. If you're a picky meat and potatoes person who is very particular about your food, you'll probably be disappointed with the buffet and MDR offerings and might want to opt for that specialty dining. Five drink packages, carry on wine and duty free liquor. Even with pre-cruise pricing of about 85 bucks a day per person, and that supposedly includes a 50% discount on the second guest, most non-alcoholics will have to stretch to take advantage of the savings it offers. There are also soda packages, packages that include specialty coffees and prepaid water packages too. With an average domestic beer costing about $7.49, you'd have to drink a 12 pack every single day to be ahead of the price curve. That's a lot of beer for most responsible adults. It's a little more realistic with cocktails or shots ranging an average of eight to 14 bucks, but still you'd need somewhere between eight and 11 mixed drinks or a combination of those with beer, wine, sodas, and specialty coffees to achieve parity. For some folks who like to party, well, the drink package is a no brainer. You can save a small fortune by opting for the drink package if that's your case. Be honest with yourself and do the math to see if the numbers work out for you. Tim ordered over 25 shots and mixed drinks in a single 24 hour period to test an unlimited drink package. Some cruise lines, I'm looking at you Carnival, Princess and Holland America, tap out with their unlimited drink packages at 15 drinks per day. That's not really unlimited, is it? We've tested and verified that Royal and MSC are truly unlimited right here on our YouTube channel. You can watch and see for yourself. Many cruise lines will allow you to bring one or two bottles of wine per person on your cruise. Better bring your own corkscrew to avoid a $15 to $50 uncorking fee in some of the dining areas. It's best to pour yourself a glass in your room and just carry the glass and not the bottle to dinner. Some clever folks have figured out how to replace the wine in a wine bottle with their favorite hard liquor using a resealing kit you can purchase on Amazon. For those ships that allow carry on wine, Never pack it in your luggage or it will be confiscated. On Royal Caribbean cruises, cruisers with diamond or higher status at 70 or more nights spent on a Royal Caribbean ship get a nice perk. RC gives diamond level cruisers four complimentary alcoholic drinks per day. To be honest, on our last cruise, that was all we needed for complete happiness. Plutonium level cruisers, well, they're really called Pinnacle, get up to six drinks a day on Royal Caribbean. That's one of the few cruise loyalty perks that are actually worthwhile. If you buy liquor on board at the ship's duty-free store, wait until the last day. There's no official maritime requirement for this policy, but most cruise ships will hold your liquor until the last day of your cruise. If you buy liquor on the last day, you can usually take it with you and enjoy it immediately. Factor that into your drink package equation and subtract one day as you replace the heavy markup with your much lower cost. You may still need mixers, but if you're the shots only kind of person, you just scored a super affordable drink day. Number four, pack well. I'm talking Tylenol, sunscreen, toothbrushes, deodorant. Other than Virgin Cruises and its cornucopia of battery operated appliances for the personal pleasure of adults and its strange lack of toothbrushes, most cruise lines have a convenience store on board. Yes, the prices are jacked up, but not to an extortionist level. Look, things happen. On one cruise we were on, I stopped in San Juan and I couldn't believe the hundreds of cruisers I recognized who made a beeline to the local Walgreens. To save some cash, bring your own toothbrushes, deodorant, Dramamine, well, your own battery operated pleasure appliances too. Felicia made a wonderful video that shows what to pack to ensure you won't be shaken down at the ship's corner store or at a San Juan Walgreens. Number three, skip the excursions. 
there are dozens of paid excursions at every cruise port available to cruisers. You can rent jet skis, swim with dolphins or stingrays, experience lush tropical scenery and waterfalls, or simply take a guided tour of a place you've never been. Or you can get off the ship and tool about the cruise port, or a little further, on your own. The truth is, once you've done the excursions and seen the sights, they rarely change. Save hundreds and stay on the ship, or get some exercise walking around the secured port area for a bit. One of our favorite ports is Cozumel, Mexico. We've been there about 20 times and done all the excursions, so there's really no need to see them again. We head over to Senor Frogs and drop a few bucks for a ridiculously fun party that involves antics that might be illegal in the States, if you know what I mean. Number two, unplug. Wi-Fi is available on most cruise ships now if you need to work or stay in touch with the fam. But don't, if you don't have to. Lock your phone in your room safe and enjoy not being hounded by everyday things. You'll save upwards of $200 per person on a seven day cruise. And don't forget to put your phone in airplane mode the moment you leave the port, or you could end up with an exorbitant cell phone bill next month. We've seen it happen. Number one, this is a little controversial. Remove the daily gratuities from your room. Now this is extremely controversial for a number of reasons, but it could save you upwards of $200 per room on your cruise. Daily gratuities are billed daily and per passenger and automatically. Most cruise lines will allow you to remove the automatic gratuities from your daily room charge. All you have to do is ask. Some large families just can't swing those additional fees, and we completely respect that. Here's the thing. A portion of those gratuities supposedly contribute to the salaries of crew members you never see who work behind the scenes. Think dishwashers, dining room attendants, laundry workers, and other hardworking people who work 12 hours a day for a fraction of the hourly rates and none of the labor protection most Americans and Europeans take for granted. But recently, there's been some suspicion on Reddit boards that those tips don't always flow down to those crew members like you think they do. On MSC cruises, the gratuities are billed as hotel service charges. Some people believe these fees may actually contribute to corporate profits since they're technically not classified as gratuities. MSC has not responded to our inquiries and crew members haven't really been forthcoming, understandably. We've decided to remove one of our two automatic daily gratuity charges from our room and tip directly. Our room attendant gets a few pics of Benjamin Franklin. Well, if he does a good job. Same with our favorite waiter, our favorite bartender, and random workers we see doing nice things around the ship. Many who have never received a tip. Yes, we might miss sharing the wealth with some of the hard-working people in the kitchen or in other places behind the scenes. Our rationale is there's a better chance the people we do tip might do the right thing better than an unchecked corporate entity. On Facebook, we've noticed a large contingent of grandmotherly folk firmly believe gifting a bag of stale Halloween candy to room attendants is appreciated instead of tips. After staff was introduced to the risk of tainted food, many employees we've talked to smile widely and secretly toss the grandma candy into the trash. Cash is king, and they can't send candy home. So what'd you think of those ideas? You might have tried some of them already, or maybe some of them are new to you. Either way, these are some great ways to save some money on your next cruise vacation. The last one's a little controversial. We're still working that thing out. We wanna make sure those hardworking employees get their tips. But again, we wanna make sure they're actually getting those tips. So we're working through some stuff and we will feature our little own documentary on cruise tipping in an upcoming video. Thanks for watching. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe and we'll see y'all soon.